Unlock the full potential with your business with Leadershipity. Our proven strategies have fueled growth for countless organizations. Ready to elevate your leadership and scale your success? Book your free 15-minute consultation now. Click the link in the show notes below and let's make your business soar. I think for kids out there today, that's, you know, my tip of the day, like, you know, surround yourself with some advisors that can really steer you in the right direction. Be aware that people will ask you to do things that maybe not, you know, the best thing for you in the end. It may be the best thing for them and they may sound like it's good for you, but it may be good for you short term, but not long term. And so, you know, got to consider this as a holistic approach and what you're trying to accomplish in this. Welcome to NIL for You. I'm Rob Sicklestein, founder and CEO of Alumni Direct, where we create a platform to help athletes and other alumni network and connect with each other. And this show is all about uh, NIL. We talk about NIL for good, which is a big topic. One of my favorite parts of the show is always Trent's tips, which are great. And uh, I'm here with my co-host, Trent Clark. How are you doing today, Trent? I'm awesome. Thanks, Rob. Nice to be on the road today. So catching up with you from Phoenix. And uh, always thrilled to be joining Rob Finkelstein, CEO of Alumni Direct on the NIL for you. Another interesting week of more interesting articles and things that are going on in the community and the world. So uh, excited to get into it as the uh, CEO of AIM for NIL. We just uh, love the education side of NIL and it just continues to develop in so many ways. Yet in the same time, it feels like as we read some of these things, we see some circular, like it's coming back to certain things. Are you finding the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. And some of the things, it's funny, it seems like all, all roads keep going through LSU and Stanford. I mean, some of these schools are really doing a lot with NIL. And, and each week we keep seeing stories from those schools. But uh, definitely some unique stories this week that we're going to cover. Uh, and, uh, you know, looking forward to the Trent's tips, too, as we talk uh, more about some of the advisory roles and things like that, with, you know, that uh, people should be seeking. Let's cover that first NIL for good. Yeah, let's dive into that one. You know, we got uh, the another LSU story, by the way, that that dives into another young man who's just doing tons of good work to help fight cancer. Amazingly, yeah, jump into this thing. Yeah, actually, it, it's uh, so this guy uh, Josh Batwell is the sports editor and beat writer for the Troy Show of Trojans, and so he found out got the unfortunate news that uh, he had. Yeah, stage three cancer. And so uh, there were some people uh, with the uh, collective at Troy uh, that got involved in some of the local companies and they reached out to them and uh, they've got the, the one athlete there. And uh, if we could scroll a little bit further there, we talk about reaching out to uh, Dell. Uh, modern technology here, folks. Uh, Dell Pettis. Did I pass it? Now, there you go. That's Dell Pettis. And uh, so Dell got involved in, in working to put things together. So this is just another example of uh, ways to uh, how athletes are getting involved in, in raising money to help cause that. So just helping, you know, as you can imagine with cancer, there's a lot of medical bills and a lot of challenges that Josh is facing. And it's great to see the community rally around him. Yeah. I mean, it's just funny because we're back to LSU, just these kids like creating environments. And I think that the more creative these kids are getting and seeing out what's out there and what can happen, it's just making it better and better. And obviously this young man, you know, coming up from LSU and, you know, Dell Pettis stepping in to, you know, get this thing at champsraise.com. That's just kids are getting ideas that I don't know if they even thought of on their own, but they're seeing other student athletes model it. So it's really impressive. And obviously this is local, right? This is a, this is a local initiative. It's a, it's a guy who's doing a great service and involved in the community in Louisiana. And he's obviously a popular guy and people are taking an absolute stance to assist this person where they have a need. And so it's cool to see these athletes come alongside and, and get involved. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, are you seeing, do you think there's like guidance coming from some of these different, uh, you know, whether it's the collectives or the companies? I mean, what do you say? Is it more the athletes finding it or more some of the, I guess, the people around them? 
Yeah, it's a good question, right? You know, where the sources of things are, where they start from and all that good stuff. You know, I really don't know the answer to that. I think a lot of people are watching, you know, NIL for Good and the Sports Philanthropy Network. And, you know, it just doesn't take a lot of energy and effort to find somebody in need. That's a pretty easy find right now, right? So if someone has a heart for it, something can be created very quickly. And our friends over at the Sports Philanthropy Network are really good at this, right? And have helped a lot of athletes out and devised plans and planning for how to maximize the exposure and earn as much for the uh, cause as possible. And I think that as people continuing to do those cycles, it's just really important on who you choose as advisors that are going to come and come alongside and help you. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in our tips later. But I think I think we're going to see more and more of this, which is, which is incredible. Yeah, I, you know, I think it shows their character. And I got to imagine as they progress in life, whether it's uh, being done in sports and, and and working on, you know, going in their jobs or, or careers, or even like when, you know, let's say somebody's good enough to be drafted to when the teams are looking to draft somebody, what do they do? So, yeah, the next one just kind of funnels into that, you know, kind of a famous name uh, that we talk a little bit about with the NIL for good is there was a story about Arch Manning. And, you know, everybody's yeah. heard of Arch and they've talked about, you know, here he is, he's, uh, you know, Eli and Peyton's nephew and Archie Manning's grandson. And he's, you know, at, at Texas, right? And he hasn't even played a, a down there yet, but he took the initiative uh, to be on the platform is that there's a, a Panini uh, had put out, I guess they had an auction and Arch Manning had a trading card and the trading card literally went for over a hundred thousand dollars, which is crazy. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, wow. that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole other business, the whole trading card industry, over $100,000. But what was great about this, and I think this is something to, to speak to his character and his upbringing, is that Arch donated that full amount to the Ronald Do- McDonald House uh, Charities, helping out kids. That, that's a, it's a tremendous story there, Trent. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. And if you think of any kid who's 18 years old, who has the ability to give one hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, there's just very few kids. First of all, there's not that many people who can earn one hundred thousand dollars a year, right? And this guy, you know, stepping up, he's getting a lot of opportunity, and like you said, a lot of opportunity, and he hasn't even played a single down yet for the University of Texas in a game, so. It's an interesting deal. Obviously, with his name and his legacy, there's a, a lot of potential there for Arch. And uh, people are pretty excited about it. I, I like this picture of him. You know, he seems like a pretty sharp kid. And man, I mean, look at the size of this kid. Like, he's, he's, he's just yeah, he's some little dude. dude, man. <laughs> yeah, he's a big dude, like, coming in. And uh, it's funny, man. Like, what a unique family. I just feel like this is another one where... Everywhere I turn around, the Mannings are having impact. You know, we talked about them starting their own media company. So a lot of just really uh, fun stuff going on with the Mannings. And, you know, kudos to Arch for uh, getting involved with the Ronald McDonald House, which is, by the way, a fabulous charity that I have had the blessing to be a part of and even work in our local Ronald McDonald House in Illinois when I lived there and serve and when you go into the Ronald McDonald house, you, know, you, you come to serve and it's not an easy environment. And I mean, these are families of children that these children are long-term patients and sometimes permanent patients at the hospital. So the chronic illness is really high and the treatment levels are, you know, off the chart. And you know, when you when you see it, you get to look into the faces of the moms and the dads and, and, and the siblings, too. I mean, because I went through this with a brother who was sick, it's a really interesting deal, right? Like, because you got your own things and you're a kid and your mom and dad are totally distracted, like with this focused effort of treating their child. And, and meanwhile, I mean, memories of, oh, yeah, from those three or four year periods where I spent nearly every weekend at the hospital. Like, whoa, 
you went where? Like, that was what it looked like. And so it's like, whoa, man, like, this is a life changing kind of event. And it shapes, you know, the people you're around. So, man, what the Ronald McDonald House to make that a place for families and kids that are going to be doing those many weekends and weeks and make it habitable. And it's a pretty cool support system and probably, you know, one of the best things that ever has come out of the McDonald's franchise. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I I love hearing stories uh, like that and just these organizations out there. And and again, once again, kudos to uh, Arch for doing that. So uh, let's kind of, uh, let's turn into, uh, you know, some of the stories that uh, that we caught on uh, this this, uh, week. Yeah, this one I love uh, because of, We've we talked a lot about the shoe deals, right? And most of these universities have agreements with one company. So they are signing on a campus wide agreement. And now you're picking your <laughs> your your favorite brand, right? You you might pick your Under Armour, which I'm, you know, certainly uh repping, you're repping today. the brand. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am repping, you know, Under Armour today. And you may pick Nike, you may pick Adidas, like there's a lot of stuff going on there, right? But all these other brands are coming in. And this is a great article about the young lady, Harper Murray. She's a player at the University of Nebraska, which is one of the top programs in the country. And man, it's so cool how she's like, she's repping this brand. And it's a pretty small brand, Avoli. And, but these are, these are the volleyball shoes that the women want to wear. I don't know if they make men's shoes or not, but this is like, this is a relatively new and, and players love them. So, you know, she's repping that brand, talking about, but at the same time, she will never wear that shoe in a Nebraska game in the Big yeah. Ten and in her, bra- in her Nebraska uniform. So it's an interesting dynamic to the brand to talk about a really high quality player like Harper and teaching these younger kids like, hey, this is a great shoe brand. And then, you know, now you've got these travel programs. So you got a young lady who might wear a Volis from the time she's in sixth grade to her senior year. And then after that six year or seven year program, she'll be wearing whatever the school tells her to wear. Right. So right. it's a dynamic that's going to keep shaping. And I don't think it'll last. I think it's going to change. Yeah, and I, I'll tell you what, I mean, I, it's interesting. I wonder if, if they can wear them when they practice or, or even on the practice, if, if they're on the university campus and have an official practice, if they have to wear that, you know, whatever whatever brand it might be, or if they can, in fact, wear the Evolis. And if they can wear the Evolis, what does that do when they're practicing in it, but then they're, they're, they have to play in something else? I mean, I, I got to imagine that's a, a little bit, I mean, you want your feet to be comfortable, for sure. Yeah. You know, I remember back in the day, this is probably, man, I'm going to date myself here. Sorry, buddy. It was like early <laughs> 90s. There was an athlete who had a, a shoe agreement and you know, you couldn't wear the other shoes. So he, <laughs> he painted, right? He painted the shoe to look like the shoe of choice. And so he still could wear his shoes. And, and I really appreciated that because I recall... Uh, us being under contract with a brand one year and I had gone through two or three pairs of those shoes and, and the shoes were causing me plantar fasciitis. Right. So this, this wasn't great, man. Like these were like shoes that were really messing with the arch of my foot because they just didn't naturally fit that shoe. The shoes were great. There's nothing wrong with the shoes, but the design style and then the way my structure is of my feet, it just didn't match up. So all of a sudden I'm having issues. Like I'm like, I can't wear those shoes, man. Like I'm going to be, I'll be out. I'll end up on the disabled list or, you know, the injured reserves if, if I got to keep wearing these things. So like, you know, there's a time and a place. And so it's hard, man. I think this thing is going to continually get tougher because really as athletes, we really recognize the value of our equipment and how important it is. And so It'll be interesting to see how the whole thing shakes. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I can see that being an issue. I mean, the last thing a, a player needs is to get injured because they, you know, they're wearing something that's not a fit. And to your point, it's not. It, it might be great for ninety eight percent of the other athletes, but for the the two percent, let's say, that's a problem. Yeah, they're gonna have to work that out. I mean, then you look at the numbers that they kind of claim in this agreement. Like, wow, how big they are, right? Like, 
4.85 million in cash. Nebraska pays to uh, Adidas pays to Nebraska, and then a six million dollar product cap. Right, so right. they're making a lot of product for the university. Of course, you have. You know, they they outfit yeah. all the teams, so it's pretty impressive. But let's jump over to this last one on this article which was, you know, near and dear to my heart, you appreciate this, is that I like when people are coming alongside and getting involved in the sports that aren't so mainstream. And, you know, here's Learfield jumping in with College Rodeo. And I've met a number of college uh, rodeo athletes uh, from Tarleton State, uh, from Cal Poly. And this is a big sport. And if actually the students and the alumni catch on to this, like this is one of these things like hockey to me. And most people probably in the South don't always think, oh, hockey, that's a great deal. But my guess as we're talking about like an LSU is those fans saw that sport played very well on their campus. They would be like, we're going. This is fun. It's action packed. It's fast. We're going to learn about it. And you would have a very faithful audience very quickly. And I think rodeo is going to produce that, you know, as this thing goes and people keep becoming aware of it. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder how many how many programs in the country have rodeo because I, I would have never guessed that was a college sport. And, uh, and yeah. it looks like, and so this company, Learfield, looks like they're a, a media company and, uh, yeah. you know, tied into college athletics. So they're, uh, I'm assuming they work with other sports, but yeah, something they're trying to help, uh, you know, to your point, get uh, rodeo more pronounced out there. Yeah, and I think it's a great question. I was trying to pick up, pick up if they actually said that in the article. I mean, Learfield works with over 180 colleges, so they're very prominent. The Big Sky region, you know, is obviously a pretty sizable rodeo area, right? And so you're seeing that probably WAC schools, the Western Athletic Conference, and a couple schools out that way are going to be much more prominent than others. But, you know, you do have the National Intercollegiate Rodeo Association and the College National Finals Rodeo. And that's pretty awesome. As you see, that's been going on. The national, the College National Finals has been going on since 1990. Wow. I mean, we are on, you know, 33 years. This is right. not new stuff. So it's, you know, new to probably the general population and the yeah. public, right? But not new to first college sports, clearly. So no, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, they're saying that so that Cal Poly, Montana State, Montana, we're talking about here, and Wyoming are all leaders in the rodeo program. And then I'm sure it, it's you get into, like you said, that as it starts spreading out to other areas that, uh, you know, we'll get involved in that. Yeah. And I want to say they're probably, you know, as a state, my guess is California and Texas have a lot of universities that have teams. So that's, you know, pretty cool. There are two massive states, right? But this is very competitive. And listen, I mean, if you haven't gone to a rodeo before, you <laughs> should go and find out. I mean, it's, uh, it's one of these things like the power in the animals and what's going on and the skill set that these young athletes have. I mean, and old athletes too. Right. Like uh, I go to the NFR annually, uh, the National Finals Rodeo in Las Vegas, and watching people, you know, rope and do different things, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. And there's not a way in the world I'm getting on a ball. It's like zero. <laughs> and these kids are like you know, loving it, man. It's, uh, it's just pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Uh, All another, right. another, another strength of Trent, huh? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, crazy. Well, let's get into, we only got a little short time here, but let's get into tip of the week. And, and I really want to talk about these articles, these last two kind of things, is that it is so important that these kids really take on who they're getting surrounding themselves with. And I think there's going to have to be more onus on the universities to really watch out for these kids. It just feels like anytime there's money, you know, that's fine, but it's getting overreach. And once the lucrative dollars start coming in, you know, there are like we've talked about, there are 570,000 athletes. Yeah. So if some of these organizations go through an athlete and then like, oh yeah, done with them, on to the next one, right? Like, that's fine. 
there's been this alarming trend that there's a lot of there's guardrails and guidelines with the NCAA around NIL and and it should be, right? There's guardrails for us as business owners, right, Rob, where you know we pay taxes on a certain timeline and we have to do certain reporting and oftentimes we need certification and there's safety and considerations that we have to make in order for us to do our business. And so it's good that there's guardrails. And so this alarming trend I've seen is that one of the guardrails are is that you can't promote performance enhancement products. You can't promote illegal substances, gambling, you know, different things like that. I think drugs are off the list, marijuana and different things, even if those are some states that are legal. So you're seeing these things get all of a sudden, it feels like, well, if that's the rule, how did we get in this deal with like a Death Wish Coffee who inked the deal? And it's the first anonymous NIL <laughs> deal, which I've never heard of. I thought that's pretty cool. This is part of what I really respect about the NIL is like the creativity of it all, right? So I do love that side of it. Now, here's the dark side of this. It's like, I don't think too many deals are anonymous anywhere. And, you know, I hear a lot of, oh, this is an anonymous kind of uh, donation. Yet within a year, everyone seems to know who made the anonymous donation, right? And so now, if this is an anonymous move to promote a product that is not allowed to be promoted by the NCAA because they classify coffee as a performance enhancer, then these kids are going to get found out and may lose a year of eligibility or take some punishment for this. And I hope that the brands care about that, but sometimes I just think that they don't. And I'm not making any you know, insinuation at Death Wish either. These, I don't know them at all, but we're taking a risk and it's the risk of everybody else's eligibility and what they're doing, right? And you know, another one, an example was the new trail. Uh, actually, one other quick thing that I just oh, yeah. in that article was just a little bit of a loophole because it says it's after the third cup of coffee that becomes, yeah. and I, it's, so then what, what does that mean? So then maybe like, it, so if you only drink one or two, you're okay and you're not breaking NCAA rules. So I, that's, uh, that's interesting. And maybe that's the, that's how they're getting around it. Right. Like, yeah, the, like, yeah, these loopholes and everything. Right. <laughs> and so it's funny. And that's, and that's the NCAA classification performance enhancer beyond third cup. Right. <laughs> And I know there's like these high powered coffees with multiple, you know, levels of caffeine, et cetera, but it just gets crazy. Another quick example is this new trail brewing company uh, as they partner with Happy Valley United. You know, again, my assumption is, is maybe that's a restaurant or something like that, but very quickly they point to the fact that state light with a dollar 50 per case, state light will be sent to benefit student athletes to happy value United, so they're not technically using the athletes this is just a company that's looking to support the athletes and support their collective so the official beer of happy valley united right and so you know they are claiming a somewhat endorsement of their collective which is right. supporting the athletes so this is back to this oh is that is that enough uh, arm length transaction that the athletes aren't necessarily promoting it, but yet they're getting money in from the promotion of the alcohol sales. So it's a challenging deal and, and the lines get gray. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I think it's it, the fans are becoming, uh, in this case, the fans are buying the beer at the stadium and that's what's, you know, the dollar 50 or whatever is going back to, uh, you know, to the collective. So it's, uh, they're becoming that it, it's interesting what they're doing with these different things. So, you know, I did have a question, quick question on back to the uh, kind of like the advisory thing. So we, we talked about how, what should people be looking for? I mean, is, uh, should they be looking at it? Like the parents, for example, I mean, you talk about the NCA, maybe get more involved, but from a parent standpoint, looking at it to help their athletes out, who should they be looking for? I mean, is it, is it legal? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really advisor? important to surround yourself with, you know, uh, resources and assets that are going to look out for your best interest. and not be driven by the almighty dollar or, you know, fame and fortune or whatever malaligned, you know, people are going for, you know, trusted advisors are just that they're trusted because they're looking out for people's best interests. 
and you and I both know, Rob, that that comes with hard and sometimes tough decisions, right? It's not easy to say no to somebody who's offering you $250,000 when you're a young person and, wow, this sounds pretty good. Like, how illegal is it? <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, a, there's a question you should never be asking, right? No. And so, you know, as we surround ourselves with people that are going to be advising, you want probably someone who understands contract and contract law, possibly a lawyer. And, and and does agreements. You want people to understand the entrepreneurial aspect of business and taxation. So tax advisory is important. Wealth management is becomes now uh, a matter of importance. Like what am I going to do with the money that I make and how do I invest that money and take that to another level? Coaches that surround you are so important because they're looking out for your best interest too. You certainly don't want to bring the school or, or your university any shame or, or discontent and discourse. So having your advisory team at the school that you can talk to these things and make sure that everything's on. So this isn't just a, oh, hey, I got an idea. Somebody called me. I'm going to do what I want to do. Because I think that's going to get kids into a lot of hot water. No, absolutely. And I'm assuming those are probably some of the things that that you do with the uh, AIM Academy is just, you know, when you're, you know, working with these families and educating just, you know, those tips you were just giving are, are things that are uh, probably uh, commonplace with what you do. 100%. Like, you know, and I think it comes back to, you know, how we were raised, right? You know, we, we know the difference between right and wrong. If it doesn't feel right, then maybe it is wrong. So, you know, there's a lot of instinct and gut in there and, you know, people try to convince you, but I think typically, we know what's good and right and what's not. So I think for kids out there today, that's, you know, my tip of the day, like, you know, surround yourself with some advisors that can really steer you in the right direction. Be aware that people will ask you to do things that maybe not, you know, the best thing for you in the end. It may be the best thing for them and they may sound like it's good for you, but it may be good for you short term, but not long term. And so, you know, got to consider this as a holistic approach and what you're trying to accomplish in this. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, another great episode, Trent. We uh, covered a lot of ground and uh, look forward to each week sharing uh, these different stories, the NIL and all these other things, all things NIL. And just NIL can be a great thing. And I think a, a lot of that uh, ties into uh, the education. So uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to do this show and, and get some great guests on uh, in the coming weeks. So uh, thanks again, Trent. And this, again, I'm Rob Finkelstein and uh, Trent Clark. Uh, it's been a pleasure. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for uh, being with us today. Always check out Alumni Direct. You can find them there. Also, you can, because you listen to the show only solely, you can go to aimfornil.podia.com and you can get 25% off your NIL Academy learnings. Just use code NIL for you. Thanks, everybody. Take care.